Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us once again today. Today's discussion is going to be quite interesting because we have two speakers lined up for you. Joining us today is Abdullah Shalan, Assistant Vice President at Rasmeel and Abdul Mohsen Garabali, Vice President at Rasmeel. Welcome Abdullah, welcome Abdul Mohsen. Hello Surin. Thanks Surin, happy to be here. For our viewers who aren't aware, Abdullah covers utilities, materials, energy and industrials at Rasmeel. And Abdul Mohsen is the lead portfolio manager for Rasmi's GCC equity strategy and also covers the healthcare sector. Abdullah, starting off with you, if you could just give us a quick update on the demand supply equation for oil and your quick uh, outlook on uh, oil prices. Where do you think we are headed from here? Sure. Uh, I, right now, I think uh, the supply demand uh, picture is quite, I, I describe it as balanced. Um, the EIA says that for Q3, their estimates are that the uh, market is slightly undersupplied. Uh, however, uh, we haven't seen that price, that meaningful price action when uh, there is a supply deficit for oil, leading us to think that traders are quite skeptical uh, and uh, have their eyes on a second lockdown of a, uh, for coronavirus. Now, uh, Going out further, one year to two years, uh, we expect oil prices to rise. Um, maybe not substantially, but maybe around the 60, 65 uh, dollar barrel uh, mark. The reason why we say that is um, in 2014, when we had the oil price shock, when oil fell uh, dramatically, um, uh, what happened was uh, the US shale producers were able to continue increasing production at this mark here while substantially decreasing their rig count. So here you see the gas rig count, the oil rig count, and the offshore oil rig count. They've come down substantially while production has maintained its profile. Uh, the reason that they've been able to achieve this is because uh, shale producers um, have focused on tier one production wells, which is the lowest cost wells. Um, they, uh, today, we see that uh, we see the picture as quite different. Why? Because um, those tier one uh, wells have been depleted. So um, all that you have left is higher cost uh, production for shale producers. So they're in quite, um, uh, let's say, uh, a hard place. Uh, today we see that the rig count has been increasing. So we have seen a market reaction to uh, uh, the current uh, supply deficit. Uh, yet um, we have, and we have seen a slight increase in production after the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, yet we don't expect to see an increase in the production from 2019 levels of around 13 and a half million barrels a day. Uh, we expect production to um, average around 12 million or 12 and a half million barrels. Which, has, uh, which is not um, uh, considered a growth in production if you're looking from 2019 levels. So with OPEC plus looking to uh, support oil prices uh, through uh, lower production and uh, the challenges of US shale, which has been the only source of production growth uh, uh, globally, um, we expect that uh, the production profile will be quite subdued while uh, if you get a return to normalization, people start flying again, um, a demand for oil will uh, go back to previous levels. So that will create a prolonged supply deficit whereby oil can increase to around 60, $65. Thank you, Abdullah. So, so if I understand this right, you're saying that bullish prices are coming, but just not yet. Uh, yes, so there's a lot of questions and we've seen market action recently uh, and uh, we've seen oil prices start to move after uh, the election. So we're just starting to see some momentum in oil prices, but we feel that there are still challenges ahead. Uh, oil has been very volatile, as we've seen for the last year or two. So we expect that volatility to continue. Um, we expect uh, to see news flow that will um, uh, provide shocks to the price of oil. Um, so with, I don't think that we're out of it yet, but um, the picture for oil is, uh, let's say, improving for the next year or two. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we could say that uh, the demand profile is quite bleak, given uh, what we see in terms of the energy mix and the shift from um, 
uh, carbon uh, producing uh, energy to renewables. Thanks a lot, Abdullah. That was a great chat, and I certainly did learn a lot from that. Uh, moving on to you, Abdul Mohsen. Uh, in terms of GCC government's policy response to lower oil prices, what have we seen so far, and how have the markets reacted to it? Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, in terms of uh, the GCC and its effects from oil price, uh, the GCC definitely has been uh, struck heavily with the decrease in oil price. And uh, we said that back in, uh, when we had a webinar back in April or March, there was a double whammy to the GCC in, ter in terms of having a hit from oil price and the pandemic. Uh, how, had, how it has uh, transpired uh, since then was uh, we saw that financials took a big hit uh, in the GCC on the back of government's uh, uh, ability or, or uh, the government's fiscal standing being hit with the low, low oil prices. And uh, industrials have been hit regarding a few of the sp uh, spending cuts that were anticipated and the uh, huge uh, stop of economic activity during the pa pandemic. Uh, in terms of how governments have reacted to it, uh, they we saw governments across the board uh, try to cut costs and cut some of the programs that they have initiated. Um, and we've seen recently uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi uh, announced that the measures that they have taken in terms of cost cutting and shift to non-oil growth uh, has assisted the, has assisted the, gov uh, the Saudi government of achieving 14% uh, non-oil growth this year and cited that without these measures that they would have been, had to resort to cutting uh, salaries by around 30%. And luckily that has not uh, happened, uh, which uh, uh, is basically beneficial for the economy. And uh, had that happened, it would have been uh, hit the domestic uh, market and economy hard. Uh, but in the GCC, definitely we saw the benefiters this year or so far this year has been uh, uh, staples and healthcare regarding of what we, what we saw and the worst uh, markets that were affected were financials and uh, more, uh, in, industrials uh, and i just want to show uh, one chart here to talk about uh, gcc uh, governments and their fiscal standing uh, uh, their break even prices so here's the uh, 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 just to show a basic uh, diagram of who, who what's the break even for each uh, GCC country. And we, uh, as we see with the current price of around 40, only Qatar is breaking even at current prices. Uh, and we see a lot of them are in the deficit. Uh, but what we see going forward that their dependence on oil will be decreasing. For instance, the forecast for 2021 will be a decrease. So that all come, uh, comes from or stems from their initi initiatives to decrease dependency on oil and diversify away an increased non-oil income. Thanks a lot, Abdul Mohsen. So if I were to summarize your discussion and have two key, uh, key takeaways, the first would be to diversify away from oil and the second would be to implement cost cutting programs in place. And uh, talking more about the market side, so far we've seen the defensive outperform but given that countries are gradually lifting lockdown restrictions, we are seeing consumer spending come back. Yes, we've seen that come back. And uh, we've seen some of our strongest uh, themes in the GCC uh, benefit uh, for, from either non -oil, uh, low oil price or from the pandemic, such as uh, e-commerce and communications with the 5G, 5G rollout. These are what we think will benefit uh, going forward. Thanks a lot, Abdul Mohsen. Lastly, Abdullah, coming back to you, I'm just curious that uh, now that we have two viable vaccines on hand, the first one from Pfizer and the second one from Moderna, uh, how has the outlook for oil changed, at least in the near term? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely in terms of outlook, the rate of change has gone from maybe negative or neutral to positive, um, as any other cyclical commodity. Um, however, having a vaccine is not the same as having uh, an effective vaccination process. So uh, the question that uh, people should ask right now is, okay, now that, that we have uh, a potential vaccine, when will we be able to come out of lockdown? When will the coronavirus threat subside? So uh, that is still not clear. And uh, I think that we'll have a lot of news flow going around about that. Um, and uh, uh, the 
price of oil is susceptible to these news flows, uh, as well as to weather uh, implications. For example, when we saw uh, the latest hurricane hit the Gulf Coast uh, of Mexico, uh, we saw oil prices uh, start to climb because of, uh, because of uh, shut in production. So uh, these are, you could say, uh, short-term impacts. Uh, news flow is considered a short-term impact as well. What's important is to um, keep your eye on the long-term. And uh, in terms of uh, our medium-term outlook, uh, yes, this is definitely very good for oil. If people start flying, uh, that will be very good for oil as well. Um, and then as well, you have on the, on the consumer end, you have demand for plastics, for construction. That's also very supportive for oil prices. Um, uh, on the other side, in terms of uh, the long term, um, oil still has a role to play. Uh, however, um, maybe not as a prominent role in the energy mix. Uh, so we see that shift to renewables as very bearish for oil. Having said that, I mean, you'll still need oil to produce uh, plastics for windmills, uh, for uh, solar panels. Uh, so uh, oil will still be a very key uh, player within production. Um, uh, uh, so uh, on uh, the one to two medium term outlook, I think uh, oil, um, I think we can agree that oil may have reached a bottom of around $40, uh, given where um, producers break evens are, and given where the fiscal break evens for uh, uh, export oil exporting countries are. Um, uh, and uh, looking at uh, in terms of a top, it's very hard to predict, but uh, I would see uh, a $60 to $65 in a, a prolonged supply deficit as reasonable. Thank you, Abdullah. I think you certainly did put forward quite a few interesting points. Uh, that brings us to the end of this discussion. Uh, thank you again, Abdullah and Abdul Mawson, for joining us. We really look forward to hosting you both separately for more detailed discussions. Until then, uh, thank you again for joining in, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you, sir.